Thank you. Hello, everybody. You know, when companies get hacked, they tend to recover. But what happens when your company gets hacked and all your products become unusable? That's the hacking thing case, so let's take a look. The company was founded in 2003, and in the beginning they were focusing out on cyber defense, doing various pen tests. Later, they shifted to cyber offense. They were developing spyware and selling it exclusively to governments and their agencies. Security community didn't know which spyware in the wild they are developing until 2012, when researchers from Dr. Webb attributed the spyware in the wild to the company hacking team. Later, Citizen Lab revealed that companies sells their products to oppressive regimes, which are misusing these products, this spyware, against political dissidents, journalists, and other similar people. As we can see here, it is not that unusual for offensive companies to sell products to oppressive regimes. This political dissident was targeted also by FinFisher and NSO Group, which are competitors to hacking team. Ironically, later the company hacking team gets hacked and all their data from the company leaked public. Sorry. Uh, the leak includes the spyware, the source code, their customers, price list, documentation, basically everything. There was also five zero-day exploits which they had before the leak. It also revealed how they had been buying these zero days from company Wupen and other independent vulnerability researchers. It also revealed that they had a product network injector for doing various man-in-the-middle attacks. And also, of course, the hack includes the spyware. They had a flagship product called a remote control system, or also Galileo. And they had spyware for desktop, also for mobile phones, and also they had UFI rootkit. Uh, according to leaked documentation, this UFI rootkit required a physical access to the computer in order to be installed. Here we can see an order for one customer. This customer ordered 50 desktop agents. For example, he ordered spyware for Windows. He didn't order spyware for Symbian. And he also bought uh, access to exploit portal. So as we can see, it is a service as every other. Their customers can buy whatever they want to buy and how much they want to buy. Uh, later, as it came as a no surprise that when source code leaked public, some other cyber criminals started to reuse the leaked source code and the leaked spyware. This was the case with Callisto Group, which was revealed by F-Secure, and maybe also the case with modified hacking team spyware sample for Mac OS X. And now it starts to be interesting. Um, Mysterious investor appeared, hacking team received fundings. And according to Motherboard, this mysterious investor has some ties to Saudi government. That's why we started the research. In the beginning, we exchanged some technical information with Citizen Lab. They shared us samples used before, and we together discovered new modified hacking team sample being used in the wild. What do we know about the spyware? The spyware used in the wild has these names. The first two names were used to target high profiles, and the first name was used to target two ambassadors in an African country. The spyware has two stages. The first stage, the scout, um, it is a very basic spyware. It is designed only to download uh, the second stage, just collect some basic information from the computer and download the second stage. Uh, the second stage is according to their, the hacking team naming convention. 
is called soldier or elite. The elite is the premium version of the spyware, the advanced version of the spyware. And it depends whether the customer bought the elite or not, so he can use it or not. Yeah, and all samples are packed with VM Protect. The first stage, Scout, um, as I said, it is a very basic spyware. It just steals the basic information like uh, installed applications and so on from the computer. And then it downloads the second stage where the actual payload is. So the soldier, it steals a lot of information. How is it designed? It collects data from computer, packs them, encrypts them, and saves into the Windows registry. Then there is another thread, uh, which is watching the registry. And if there are some new data in the registry, it uploads the data to CNC server. Another thread is responsible for checking whether there is no new version of the spyware available, or also whether the malware operator didn't change the configuration of the spyware. And yeah, the leaked, the, this new modified hacking team Spyware sample has uh, improved architecture. And in general, the architecture of the Spyware and the implementation is very good, meaning they have very good mm, memory handling and error messages like error checking and so on. Let's take a look at the actual payload. Here we can see a code responsible for stealing clipboard data. Here it steals clipboard with uh, basic data like actual time, process name, Windows title, and so on. Here it packs and encrypts this data and quiz the log. And as we can see, the code is pretty robust. You know, stealing clipboard data can be achieved by just one Windows API function. So all this code is responsible for, for doing this. So it's quite complicated spyware. Another functionality is that they can steal various data from mails and from social networks. Uh, they, have they have support for Facebook and Twitter. They are extracting messages, contacts, and photos. And if there is available a location of the photo on Facebook, they can also extract this location. They are stealing emails and contacts from Gmail and, and Twitter and they can also steal files from Google Drive. Some other ex uh, functionality is, I would say, self-explanatory. So I will continue with geolocation. They are collecting uh, Wi-Fi networks available around, and based on it, they try to determine location of the victim. Then they some other interesting functionality, they can steal various data from popular web browsers. They are stealing save data, preferences, history, mm. and something else I would say, yeah, bookmarks from popular web browsers. And very interestingly, they can also change configuration in Tor browser. It means that the attacker can track the victim very well and what's worse, that after removing the spyware from the computer, the changed configuration in, in Tor browser remains, of course. What is new uh, is support for monitoring Skype calls, keylogging, and monitoring mouse. They are doing screenshots when you click on mouse button. And what is completely new, what was actually these three things, which I just mentioned, they moved from the premium version, from Elite to the Soldier. And what is completely new, what wasn't in the league, is uh, scheduling an installation. It means that malware operator can choose at what time it will uninstall uh, from the system and the whole operation will terminate. This is the configuration file of the soldier. So once the customer buys the agent, they can choose what configuration they want to use. For example, this one has, uh, for example, enabled screenshots, and they are doing it every 120 seconds.
So as we can see, the spyware is in active development. The question is, who is developing the spyware? Is it some random cyber criminals like Callisto Group, for example, or are we looking at the rise of the Phoenix? Would it be a surprise that company wanted to recover from the hack and went back to a luxury business? Let's focus on details. The spyware had, the modified hacking team spyware had digital certificate. That is not so unusual for malware, but this one was issued by Taute. And Taute is verifying the entities. They issued this certificate to a London company, Zyber LTD. It means that UK company signed the modified hacking team spyware. We collected more spyware samples, post leak samples, and all of them were signed. I just mentioned Zyber LTD before. There were some free Moscow companies. Again, the certificate was issued by Tauta, so there are real Russian companies. Before, there was some software developer, Rafael Karnachina, and before, modified hacking team spyware was signed by Valeriano Bedeshi. Valeriano Bedeshi is co-founder of hacking team. The spyware has uh, versions inside. Before the leak, we can see here the versions. They were pushing updates every few months of the spyware, and they were also signing the spyware with these certificates. Here we can see leak, and this in red is reusing the leaked spyware, the version 13, it was by Callisto Group, version 14, that's the same spyware what was in the leak. As we can see, after the leak, the modified hacking team spyware samples um, have new versions, and the versioning, like improving the versions, pushing new updates, is very in a very smooth development. It's, it is increasing the same way as before the leak. Also, digital certificates, that's something, some other thing which is very typical for hacking team developers. Before the leak, they had been using malware descriptions. Uh, they were copying these descriptions for, from legitimate applications and putting it into the hacking team spyware. The modified hacking team spyware used in the wild right now has uh, also uh, some description from a legitimate application. <coughs> so digital certificates, smooth versioning, malware um, was also packed with VM protect. That is something what uh, was like these developers, it looks like these developers are deeply familiar with hacking team spyware development habits. Before the leak, the spyware, when it was installed into the system, it increased its size by random data to four megabytes. After the leak, they increased the size to six megabytes. How they were increasing it? Before the leak, they had been generating random numbers by get the count function and run function. After the leak, they added uh, crypt gen random Windows API function, and only if it fails, they will use the previous function for generating random numbers. This is another evidence that these developers are orienting very well in the code. Before the leak, they had been using replacement for Windows API sleep function, as we can see here. Sometimes they had been using sleep, sometimes these two Windows API functions, which together acted as sleep. After the leak, these modified hacking team samples are using free Windows API functions, which is again a replacement for a sleep function. Again, this is something what random malware developers wouldn't bother 
when reusing the leaked source code. When they detected, when the spyware detected a uh, sandbox that it is running in the sandbox, they, it is re resetting the critical parts of the memory and then it connects to a legitimate domain. Before the leak, they were connecting to Skype domain. After the leak, they changed this domain to CNN. This is a screenshot of the leaked source code. And we can see here that they were using strings when they, again, when they detect a sandbox. And they had a strings history. This was used in RCS remote control system version 9. Point, I'm not sure, 9.4. Yeah, then, again, then they changed this to the, um, in 9.5 version to these strings. This was the most recent strings before the leak in 9.6 version. Again, after the leak, the modified hacking team samples have these strings changed. This is another screenshot of leaked source code. We can see here um, that they were, they had been regularly changing strings, uh, user agent strings. This was used in, I don't know, RCS for, of a 9.3 version. They had been regularly changing the strings with various versions of remote control system. Again, after the leak, this user agent is changed. Again, another screenshot of uh, leaked source code. Uh, they were generating uh, some batch file for uninstallation. Before the leak, the batch file had names like random numbers dot bat. This was before, this was in most recent version in the leak. And again, after the leak, this batch file has a changed name. So, putting it all together, improving the architecture of the code, masquerading with digital certificates and descriptions of the applications, packing with VM protect and doing changing changes like batch file names. This is not something what a random malware uh, opera or random malware developers like cyber criminals would bother with. They would add some functionality into the spyware, not changing these parts of the code. These changes are a typical procedure for hacking team developers. All this convinced us that, that hacking team developers are back in the business. We don't know whether they sell the spyware as a hacking team company or some other company, but it's not so important. The same guys are developing the spyware. It is big and still evolving business. We can see more and more companies joining, the, joining this offensive business. And also we can see more and more countries which are interested in these solutions. Thank you very much for your attention.